Hi everybody and welcome. My name is Luke and this is The Science Lens where I show you how science can improve your critical thinking skills. In today's video we're talking about peer-reviewed research and why it's important to look for it when you're reading about science. Where do you get your scientific information? For most people, the answer to that question would be some combination of websites, the news, or social media. But I don't need to tell you that sometimes that information can be a little dodgy. Now, if I asked a working scientist, a medical professional, or an academic where they get their scientific information, they might say websites, the news, and social media, but they would definitely also say peer-reviewed journals. You see, in the science community, peer-reviewed journals are generally seen as the most reliable source of scientific information. They're how scientists communicate the findings of their research, and they're essential reading for anybody that works in the field of science. So what are peer-reviewed journal articles, and why should people like you and me care about them? When a scientist, or more likely a group of scientists, conducts research, they summarize their findings in an article that contains the method they used, the data they collected, and their conclusions. Then they send the article to the editor of a scientific journal who reads it to determine if it's a good fit for their publication. If so, the editor sends the article to a handful of scientists who are experts in that field so that they can review the methods used, how the data was processed, and whether the conclusions drawn are logical. This is why the process is called peer review, because these scientists are the peers of the original author of the article. Now, if the reviewers find any problems with the article, they can recommend the author make changes or maybe advise the editor not to publish it at all. If, on the other hand, the reviewers don't find any problems, they can recommend it for publication. This is why peer-reviewed articles are seen by scientists as reliable sources, because the information they contain has been thoroughly scrutinized by scientists that specialize in that particular field. Most of us probably don't use peer-reviewed journals to access scientific information every day, but the people that write about science for websites and newspapers definitely should. So when we're reading scientific information online, we should take steps to make sure that the author has done their homework. So let me show you how I go about doing that with an example. I'm currently in the Northern Hemisphere and we're coming into cold and flu season here. Now, if you're like me, you probably heard people say at this time of year that you should start taking vitamin C tablets. And every time I hear this, I'm like, what am I, a pirate? I don't have scurvy, why do I need to take vitamin C tablets? But this year I decided I was gonna withhold judgment until I had done a little bit of research to find out if vitamin C can in fact help prevent or cure colds and flu. Now, normally when I'm doing this kind of research, I would look at a handful of different resources to make sure the information all lines up. But for the sake of keeping today's video short, I'm just gonna look at one and I'm gonna check whether they've used peer reviewed journal articles for their research. So here we are on livescience.com. Now I've read the article and the summary of what it says is that vitamin C does nothing to prevent colds, but can slightly reduce the duration of colds. So let's take a look at their sources to see if this information is reliable. So this first link just takes us to another page on the Live Science website. This is called an internal link and websites use them a lot to make sure that you stay on their website. It helps sort of keep traffic on their website, but it doesn't tell us anything about the reliability of the information that they're sharing. So let's keep going. Okay, a little bit further down, and we have a quote from a medical doctor. Now, this is a good time to point out that peer-reviewed journal articles aren't the be-all and end-all of reliable information. There are other ways to get reliable information, like you know, government agencies like NASA or interviewing experts like they've done here is also a really great way to get reliable information that's sort of condensed into a form that's more easy to understand than reading 100 different journal articles. But we're not looking for that today. We're looking for peer-reviewed journal articles today. So I'm sorry, Dr. Liakis, I'm sure you do good work but you're not what I'm looking for today. So let me just keep reading a little bit. Okay, if I scroll down to the subheading, does vitamin C help with the prevention of colds? I see a link to an article from Cochrane Reviews. So let's just click on that link. Now I wanna check whether the journal is peer reviewed. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the about section select Cochrane database of systematic reviews, because as you can see here, that's where it was originally published. And on this page, I'm gonna hit Command F or Control F on a PC and look for the word peer. And as you can see here, peer review is indeed part of their publishing process. So I'm gonna read the abstract to check if it did in fact support what was written in the Live Science article. And if it did, then I can feel confident that the author of that article is presenting me with reliable information. 
One last tip, if you do decide you want to go straight to the source, you can also just search directly for peer-reviewed journal articles online. Now, probably the simplest way to do that is to use Google Scholar and to search for the topic that you're interested in. Now, not all articles on Google Scholar are from peer-reviewed journals, but it makes it much easier to filter out the regular web content. For some great tips on how to use Google Scholar, I've linked a handy resource down in the description. So you can see that you don't need a bunch of subscriptions to peer reviewed journals to feel confident that the information you see online is reliable. With just a little bit of digging, you can make sure that what people are presenting is based on rigorous science. And while it might seem like a hassle to do that extra reading, just think of all the money I'm saving on vitamin C tablets. Well, that's it from me for today, but if you'd like some resources to help you review the information that I covered, I recommend that you check out my store on Teachers Pay Teachers. There I have a bunch of resources for teaching critical thinking in the science classroom, and you can find a link to that down in the description below. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos on how science can improve your critical thinking skills. And finally, I used a bunch of resources for today's video that I highly recommend you check out if you'd like to know more about the topics that I covered, and they're also linked down in the description below. For now though, that's it from me. Thanks for watching.